What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jen Mint, and I'm back with another Omnibus haul. It's been a little minute since we've had one, but a big haul courtesy of Organic Price Books. Plus, we've got something from Dynamite and an early look from Marvel. If you guys are looking to pick up any Omnibus or collected editions, go to OrganicPriceBooks.com. Use code Jen Mint. It'll save you two bucks every time. Now, let's jump into The Adventures of Red Sonja Omnibus by Dynamite. Really a standard size hardcover, classic Roy Thomas, Bruce Jones, Frank Thorne, and John Buscema. Here we have the spine here. You got that red for Red Sonja. And then we have the back $100 cover price here, collecting Marvel feature one through seven, Red Sonja one through 15, and you get all of her solo appearances from the Savage Sword of Conan. Cover page has a nice wallpaper of Red Sonja covers. More splash pinups, and here goes the credits. We've got table of contents here. Roy Thomas with an introduction. And then they're calling it Volume 1 of Red Sonja, which is Marvel Fanfare, issues 1 through 7 from 1975. The art doesn't take up the whole page in a lot of this. I'm not sure what's going on with the format. Uh, I would have liked to see it in more of an oversized format and fill up the whole page, but... You are getting this classic material in this one hardcover book. Sideshow actually just came out with an amazing Red Sonja premium format. So if you're anyone like me who didn't grow up with Red Sonja, but you're into statues and you wanted to get into the character, definitely a good jumping on point if you want to get classic Red Sonja in an all-in-one book. Nice color art. They do have an intro by Roy Thomas here in the back. Plus it has covers and some more extras. So this is where we're getting all of the covers for each issue and then ending it with a nice pinup. All right, if you guys used to watch my new comic book day reviews, you know my thoughts on the nice house on the lake. There's a deluxe edition collecting the entire series. Let's take a look at it. All right, not an omnibus, but a nice oversized hardcover for a nice house on the lake. This deluxe edition by James Tiny and the Fourth was one of my favorite series as I was reading the weekly comics last year. Such an intriguing, unique story. And uh, I was on the edge of my seat trying to figure out what was actually going on here. So this collects the 12 issues, I would assume. Yeah, $50 cover price here. A biography on James Tinian and Alvarado Martinez Bueno, plus Jordi Belair. The main character, Walter, I'm not asking you anymore. I'm telling you, this is how the world is going to end. Wraparound cover, this ends up being the, I guess, last place on Earth, if you will. I'm not going to give away too much of this story. That white cover page is a little jarring, right? <laughs> but basically, this opens up with a guy at a bar asking somebody, hey, what would you do if this was the end of the world? And it seems like it's a cheesy pickup line, but it actually is real. We have this character, Walter, who recruits all these friends that he's met throughout his life, through college, through wherever, and they all have these unique aspects, like a writer, an artist, uh, whatever they were, a doctor, a, a pianist, a consultant. So he ends up getting these people together, puts them in this nice house on the lake, and then shows them that the outside world has been destroyed. Everybody they know and love is dead. They're the only ones left. And then we're wondering what Walter is. Is he a ghost? Is he an alien? And we do get the answer to it. They're in this house where anything can be provided to them. Like if they write down on a list, they need groceries, they'll just show up the next day. And they start kind of playing with the rules of this house and what they're allowed to do and ask for. Can they remove themselves from the situation? And you see Walter kind of doing this weird stuff, which again, makes us wonder what he actually is. So a nice like suspense thriller with a touch of sci-fi here, not to give too much away, but definitely uh, a good read. I think for the first six or seven issues, I was given it pick of the week every time it came out. Get some variant covers in the back, a little John Jiang action. I had a few of those actually. Yeah, look at Bjorn Barons doing the Walter thing that he does. In the back, you get fleshed out biographies on all of the uh, people in the home. You go some design concepts, Walter again. Very cool, creepy stuff. It had me intrigued. And I didn't really like the ending. <laughs> Spoiler alert on that. But uh, yeah, the deluxe edition. All right, y'all, now we're on to some turtle power. Now, I'm not too happy with this omnibus. I like that it collects the material, but let's just dive into it and you'll see what I'm talking about. 
All right, so I ditched the Ultimate Collection Editions for the hardcover compendiums. Essentially, the TMNT Mirage Days Omnibuses. This is volume two, Kevin Eastman, Peter Laird. Man, I do have some complaints about the quality of this book though, man. First of all, look at this ding. The dust jacket is very thin. It's like susceptible to dings, folds, blemishes from your fingers. So I don't know, they kind of cheaped out on the dust jacket. And also, I'm not sure exactly why it's missing issues. It must have something to do with whoever was the creators on those issues and, and maybe there's certain rights, but it collects TMNT issues 15 through 23, then 27 through 29, 31 through 37 of the ongoing series. Going back to Tales of the TMNT, it gives us issues six and seven. If you guys know the reasons why, let me know in the comments below. But this book does retail $150. Here's a quick look at the inside of the dust jacket. And you can just see the paper quality on this dust jacket sucks, man. I might have to get custom dust jackets made for these. Biography on Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, the creators of TMNT. And then the actual hardcover here. Got a similar spine. Nothing on the back. Even opening up to the cover page is kind of like... That uh, nice house on the lake. The white interior cover pages just kind of feels cheap to me. I don't know what's up with that. All right, jumping in, get some color. Now we got the table of contents. You don't see these covers too often, right? Like after the first four, it's like you rarely see these TMNT covers. So black and white, you got your classic Mirage era turtles. Love the history here. Gotta be honest, I'm a little disappointed with um, the lack of content here. It makes me think I made a mistake switching to these Omnis. And then, man, IDW announced the TMNT Archie comics for an omnibus, so I sold my trade paperbacks to upgrade as one does, and then they canceled it. So now I don't have those 14 volumes that I've had for years. Kind of disappointing with what IDW is doing. Detail looks like it gets a lot better here moving on. I think this is when they started getting more help from the outside team for Mirage. Classic turtles. Oh, those Triceratops creatures. Look at the details. Giving manga vibes, right? Feeling like I'm looking at Berserk or something here. All right, so they did include a ribbon for the bookmark. It's always helpful. You don't have to use a bookmark. You got it built in there. But yeah, continuing with the black and white, I don't think it ever gets into color in this volume. The covers do, right? The covers have always been color. All right, so Tales of the TMNT is in color. I love these because it reminds me of more of the 90s movie stuff. All right, and let's see, anything else in the back? I don't think so. Some original covers and concepts. So one page of bonuses. <laughs> All right. You guys want to meet legendary artists Jim Lee and David Mack, plus John Dalmayan, the founder of Torpedo Comics and drummer for System of a Down? Well, this month will be your chance. Saturday, November 18th, JPG and Steve Shewitt are celebrating their one-year anniversary of Ninja Funk and having this private signing. It is free to enter, but if you want to get anything signed, you can purchase tickets right now at Eventbrite. There's going to be CGC witnesses, and you can leave your books to get submitted there as well. If you guys are in the area, go to the Ninja Exchange. It's in Carlsbad, California. More details at Eventbrite to check out the event. All right, guys, this one is a banger. I started reading this one, got almost all the way through it. The Batman Adventures Omnibus, the companion to the animated series that came out in the 90s. Let's take a look at it. All right, so here we have the dust jacket, the classic Batman the Animated Series logo. Kelly Puckett, Paul Dini, Bruce Tim, Mike Perlbeck, rest in peace. Let's take a look at the spine here on the dust jacket. So your typical BTAS font, same logo. And on the back, this was a great read. All of the extra material in here really gave more insight into the comics on how they were considering doing reenactments of the shows but decided to do original stories for the comics which was a great idea and just kind of telling about how this 36 issue run came together it does collect the two annuals it also has the batman adventures holiday special mad love uh, black and white issue one and it also has the never before released in collected edition uh, batman mask of the phantasm so this retailed $150. Here's the inside of the dust jacket. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. Biography on Kelly Puckett, Paul Dini, and Bruce Tim. Uh, also Mike Perlbeck, who was responsible for some of the early issues here, passed away sadly in 1996. We got a beautiful wraparound cover here. Classic BTAS art, Batman and his rogues. And as you can see from the bookmark, I read more than half of this. I just got so far behind and I figured we would just show off the book 
you know, from what I've already read. Here's the interior cover page. Again, you have all the rogues, you have Batman. Here we have the interior credits, table of contents. Again, the introduction, everything in addition to the comics is a great read in here. I read all this stuff, the, the four words, the introductions, and it jumps into the Batman Adventures issue number one. So originally it was a little bit more wordy than what it would end up being, but they went with the simplistic art style. They originally wanted this to be a six issue series, and then it ended up uh, becoming much more than that, obviously. And as they move forward past those six issues, they learned that even less is more. So what you'll see is a lot of pages with just large panels of very little dialogue. Let's get to that really quick. A lot of movement, and there's some great insight in, into this as well as this script calls for an action scene. And then what's drawn on the page is like this amazing scene that you could have never requested as a writer. So here we go, as you can see, it starts getting to just big four panels. The dialogue moves very quickly and it feels like you're watching one of the, uh, one of the episodes. Of course, you get Batman Adventures 12, which is the first comic book appearance of Harley Quinn. She first appeared in the animated series and then was brought into the comic universe. But the art is spot on to what you would see from the animated series. Their original stories, which is great. Characters that we know and love. Uh, great dialogue, man. There's a great Ra's al Ghul line in here. I love this line so much. I want to use this on someone. At least have the decency to be ashamed of your ignorance. <laughs> love that. So where did I get? I read all the way up until I was on issue 28. Man, and I was just flying through this and I just got so busy. But as you can see, like I mentioned, big, huge pages of beautiful artwork. And then you're getting all the bonus material. You're getting the Mad Love one shot by uh, Bruce Tim and Paul Dini, who they didn't do the heavy lifting on the majority of the run, but they were on site like consultants. And I'm sure that helped, you know, keep this very true to their vision. Then you have the Mask of the Phantasm adapted into this comic style. So definitely a great omnibus for anyone uh, fans of the show or Batman in general. Here's the Batman black and white. And then we've got a pinup gallery in the back, some Batman Superman, Killer Croc, Kelly Jones doing the BTAS style with the signature long ears. Freeze, man, Freeze was better because of the Batman animated series. They did such a great job with like tragic villains that, you know, once you got to understand their motives, they weren't really bad for the sake of just taking over the world. Here's the same art from the wraparound hardcover, polybag art for Batman Adventure 7. And then we get some more bios in the back. You know who's a big fan of Batman the Animated Series? My boy Eris from Variant Comics. Not only is he a huge fan of b but he's never owned an omnibus until now. Yo, what up, Jem? Thanks for having me on. Like you just said, this is indeed my very first omnibus, which is crazy even to myself. I've been reading comic books since I was a real little kid, right? They're what helped me learn to read. I have a plethora of them in long boxes and short boxes. I have a plethora of trades, but for whatever reason, this is my first omnibus. But I gotta say, I gotta say, this is like the perfect one for me to start with because anyone who's been following me on Variant or on social for any reasonable amount of time knows BTAS is literally what got me into comic books. And as someone who's a massive BTAS fan and has this entire run in single issues, this is it. There's something to be said about holding the entire series, the annuals, the one shots, all that stuff in your hand, just all of it, all at once. It's great and it's it's beautiful. The artwork, it's you know, the vibrant pages. It's just, God, this is, oh, look, look, look. See, look, just flipping through it randomly. And then we land on Batman Adventures 12, the first comic book appearance of Harley Quinn. It's freaking, it's amazing. As a BTAS fan, 10 out of 10, I see, I see the appeal with Omnibus now. Let me tell you, Jim, and everyone watching, this could be bad. This, this, you, you, this could be the start of a new collecting habit. This is, it's, it's a good thing, but it's also a bad thing. Anyway, if you guys want this, you can head over to organicpricebooks.com. That's where I got mine. They're awesome over there. They have absolute editions, omnibus, box sets, all that stuff. And lastly, I'm gonna say one more time, this is amazing. If you're a BTAS fan, get it. 10 out of 10 all day long. 
Yo, thanks for coming through, Eris. Make sure to check him out over on Variant. They have a small channel over there. You may have heard of it. Next up, we got an early release from Marvel. The Incredible Hulk Volume 2 comes out November 21st, continuing the epic Hulk saga. All right, so yeah, after forever of just having a Volume 1, Marvel is continuing the Incredible Hulk story with Volume 2. This is Stan Lee, Roy Thomas, and more. So you do have the new school type of... Uh, spine here with a smaller font and a little picture on the bottom and the issues that it collects which is incredible hulk 103 through 134 plus annual one 100 dollars cover price interior page as always giving us a brief synopsis of where we're at in the hulk series and a biography on the creators we also have herb trimpy marie severin and gary friedrich pretty simple hardcover incredible hulk logo keeping it clean spine is the same you get a little pinup of Hulk on the back. They're usually pretty simple when it comes to the Silver Age Omnis. You got the Jim Steranko Incredible Hulk Annual One art here. Here we have some more credits. Jumping into the table of contents. Herb Trimpy with a introduction here. I got another confession to make. <laughs> All right. And then opening up, you get the cover. Jumping right into the issue. Big splash page. Huge artwork. Man, talk about filling up the whole page. This is why this trim is the best format for Omnis, man. Look how big these panels are. So bright on new, freshly printed white pages. You got the Jade Giant going all through here. Uh, this is something that I would love to get into eventually, having the history on the shelf, being able to pick up Volume 1 and Volume 2 and reading the entire history of The Incredible Hulk from the original series. These are my favorite types of Omnis, man. Blue chip, Silver Age, Marvel characters. A lot of action going on here, even in these earlier issues, man. This would be, of course, once the title reverted back to The Incredible Hulk. It was The Incredible Hulk for the first six issues. And then it changed, what was it, Tales uh, to Astonish. And then uh, after issue 101, it came back, which we saw in the other volume. Looks like it does have the bonus materials that were collected in the back of the original comics. You got the letters section. Man, great art in here. I wonder why it took them so long to uh, print volume two. Ryan O vs. the Hulk, that's pretty dope. All right, in the back, and original art. We have interiors for Incredible Hulk 104, issue 106, original cover. Always cool to see how they piece together these original comics from back in the day. And this was the one with yeah, the redrawn face, right? Yeah, so this was the original Steranko, and then they had Marie redo the face. All right, yeah, so it was redrawn. A little bit more simpler, right? Like his teeth were more pronounced here. He was angrier in the face. I don't know what was wrong with that one. Anyway, nice to get through that, that original one. A lot of uh, original panels and covers in this one, huh? Got some house ads. They always like to throw those in promoting it in other comics as this was coming out. The Marvel Superhero, so what are these reprint covers? Pretty cool stuff, man. Glad to see them continuing with the Incredible Hulk. All right, guys, the last one is a big boy, a monster-sized omnibus, if you will. Hellboy, collecting the original 12 volumes. Let's jump into it. All right, here we go. The monster size Hellboy, Mike Mignola, and others. It does come with one of these, like, pieces of paper on the back once you rip off the plastic you just have these until you throw them away so finally a physical format to fit the scope of this saga this collects all original 12 volumes of the essential hellboy series plus the complete two volume story of hellboy in hell another 150 dollar book but this one you're getting your money's worth man this thing is enormous look at the spine that is a big book nothing on the back here oh yeah actually it does i'm tripping you got the master of negative space, Mike Mignola. This is a big one. You do have a red ribbon right in the middle. Let's see what happens when we open up. What do we got? A black interior page. Monster size Hellboy. Just like the library editions, you got this super shiny high gloss paper, which I always leave fingerprints on and uh, hard to capture in the camera. But we have our table of contents here, jumping into the first volume, chapter one, Seed of Destruction. 
This is a full circle moment for me in the channel. This was like one of the first recent reads that I did when I read all of those library editions. And um, man, it was new to YouTube, new to giving reviews. Maybe I should read this whole thing and do another updated review of this now that I've become more comfortable making videos. But yeah, instead of those library editions collected in what, like six or more volumes, you can get everything in this huge monster size edition. I don't want to say that the trim is larger because those library editions were tall and super wide. So I don't really have those to, still to compare, but look at this huge book with minimal gutter loss. It has a nice um, breathable spine so that you don't have anything missing in the center here. Classic stories, uh, uh, definitely a great read. I would recommend this book in this format or any format, but to check out Hellboy, I did thoroughly enjoy this. If you guys want to go back and check out that early Gem Mint review, you know, it's, it's still up there. But, uh, you know, forgive me because it's probably very cringe. But anyway, so we get all of those volumes like it mentioned. And as far as bonus material, let's see, what do we get? Black and white Min Mignola pinup. That's the same art from the back of the book. All right, so just basically showing the other types of Hellboy volumes that are available by Mike Mignola. Huge book, but very cool add to the collection. All right, y'all, there goes the haul, monster-sized haul. Let me know which ones you guys are picking up, if any, in the comments down below. Again, big thank you to Organic Price Books. Make sure to use code GEMMINT every time. It'll save you two bucks. Thank you to Dynamite and to Marvel. And again, to you guys, appreciate you watching. Stay minty fresh. Peace.